further significant problem in the database has been isolating trends over time. Much previous work on the STN has tended to assume a relatively flat sales tableau, but in fact our group stacked bar chart shows that the STN's sales peaked in 1782 and were considerably higher in 1781 and 1783 than in most other years of their existence. As a result, identifying trends over time was problematic from our data without very sophisticated forms of analysis outside the database and very difficult to arrive at quickly. The result of this was that we needed to come up with a way to show those sorts of trends over time. Let us pose a question about a famous author, in this case Voltaire. Were we to want to compare his sales over time? We can do that very easily in the database using the compare button. I won't even bother to compare him to any other author. Thus, So here we see some raw numbers over time and a clear downward trend in sales. What does that mean entirely though? Was he more popular before his death in 1778 than afterwards? Clearly the sales figures would seem to suggest yes. But the decline may not be as great as in reality in terms of his popularity because what we don't see here is the proportion of STN sales that went to Voltaire at each time. These are raw figures and we know that there was a sales hike spike at this period for all works that the STN dealt with. Our solution to this problem to identify trends more clearly was to introduce a way of graphing not by raw numbers but by percentages of the total as shown here. So we have two options as a result for displaying the results and if we change do that we find that the graph will change once again when it arrives. Here, the fall off seems to be much more marked and it seems to take uh, several stages. A first stage of high sales, albeit in the time that the STN were being set up as a business and dealt in relatively few titles. A plateau through the 1770s to his death, whereupon there was a brief glitch. A minor rise and then a fall off to very very low levels until the eve of the French Revolution where his sales picked up slightly once again. This discussion brings us to the question of drop down menus in the database more generally. There are a series of options that are worth examining just briefly. If we turn to the question of sales in particular, we can find that menus always present us with three choices. Raw sales, that is sales by the STN to other parties. Supply, which is to say purchases from other parties by the STN. And then in the middle, the rather perplexing perhaps sales minus returns or what we might call net sales. The reason for this button is that although much of the literature on the STN would suggest that returns were small or non-existent, in fact we found a substantial number of volumes returned in this way and as a result we felt that net sales were necessary. In fact in a few cases in the database returns are big enough 
where there are gaps in the data that they can actually return a minus figure on total sales and users should be aware of this remote possibility. Another significant point concerning the drop-down menus is the slightly straightforward and slightly surprising possibility of using drop-down menus for place, Ch having to choose before we get a further menu. If we choose 18th century sovereign territories, for example, you will notice that suddenly a new set of boxes has appeared here, a second sub-menu that lists all the sovereign territories, and that is how we get to the possibility of checking Voltaire's popularity in 18th century France as opposed to everywhere. In other words, there is a two-stage process to selecting localities if you want to localise a search to a particular area, and users need to be aware of that. This screen also presents us with another choice of menus that needs to be remarked, at raising the question of what is authorship. So far in searching for Voltaire, we have used no subcategories of authorship, but we could, if we chose, choose to look merely at Voltaire's works as a translator, as an editor, a secondary author, that is to say a collaborator, or as a primary author, the main author of a work. Those those appear whenever we're confronted with choices of authors and any option can be chosen um, or rejected by the user. The default position, however, is always to include all of them. So there is a macro view of authorship as the default setting of the database. Having dealt with some of the major conceptual issues, it's now time to think about a few little goodies and twists that we've put into the database to make it both more fun and more informative, and perhaps in places make it fit a little bit more with the political realities and complexities of Ancien Régime Europe. Ancien Régime Europe was, of course, a patchwork of conflicting jurisdictions and authorities, political, religious and otherwise, and to capture this in ordinary territorial form by a lower and a sovereign territory, as we've attempted to do, could never give us a full part of the picture. To try to add a little bit more richness to the picture and the trade of the STM, therefore, we have added a set of other place groupings which might allow for richer and more detailed analysis for those who want to go into more depth about particular sorts of territories. As a result, we have in the database, in searchable through the browse menu, um, but also uh, the compare menus, the possibility of interrogating certain other territorial units. The lands of the Holy Roman Empire would be one, and ecclesiastical lands, as I've mentioned. The imperial free cities in the database can be grouped together, as can the cities in which there were parlement in France between 1776 and 1790. The university towns of Europe too. And finally, we have four territorial units that for mapping purposes had to be broken up um, in our visual representations, but which people may well want to search. You can therefore bring together the entire Habsburg territories, including those in northern Italy and those in Belgium, as well as around the hereditary lands. The non-contiguous territories of Württemberg and of Prussia in Germany, and of course the papal territories, which included Avignon um, as well as papal territories in Italy. A book search will search books at the level of both the shorter and the long titles for both the superbook and the edition. 
a client search comes up merely with names of clients. So if we were to search Grasse, we will find immediately Francois Grasse and his brother Gabriel. Finally, if we search places, we will find that it will find any place in both English or French. For example, Londres comes up as London when we make that particular search and then we can browse through. The advanced edition search works at the level of individual editions and therefore we can get much more nuanced information to come up with only translated German editions for example or perhaps an individual year of publication and see what proportion of books published in that year the STN was selling. The year 1774 we find is year of publication for no less than 101 editions of works with which they were trading. After doing all our bibliographic and statistical work on books, it's perhaps time to think about the content of books themselves. This database is primarily a bibliographic one and a bibliometric one, one that studies particular books and identifies the numbers of them that were traded around Europe, both by the STN and the various partner houses that supplied it with books. However, the work we did on categorization of books in particular but also identifying specific editions forced us to do a great deal of work both in libraries locating editions and in digital repositories of books the most familiar of which of course is Google Books but we might also talk about the Hathi Trust books in Gallica at the French Bibliothèque Nationale and various other digital collections and repositories were we to ignore such a wide wealth of books in the database itself? The answer is no. Wherever we have encountered a single book in the correct edition that the STN traded in digital form, we have tried to create a link to it. So users of the database can move straight from the database to the text under consideration. To illustrate how this is done, I've turned at last to You le Grand et Confucius, a book by Nicolas Gabriel Leclerc, um, which is shown here in all its richness and under the specific edition in question, we have a link to its Google Book copy for users to consult. Not content with providing that facility, we have also the text in a simplified form compared to the full riches available through Google Books actually connecting to the database here and that can be searched by users interested in adding a much more qualitative form of experience of the STN's bestsellers to the quantitative database with which we've provided you here. We hope you will enjoy the riches. Happy searching.